What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well this Wednesday. Today's video, we're going to be going over maintenance 101. Basically everything you need to know about how to upkeep and take care of your new Talaria Sting R. So the first maintenance task that I want to briefly touch on is the gearbox oil change. This is probably the most consuming maintenance task that you're going to have to do on this bike. And it's very simple and it really doesn't even take that much time. I've already done it, so I don't need to change mine again for a long time. So this is going to be less of a how-to and more of just an informational thing. If you guys would like a full how-to on this, there's plenty of other videos out there doing it. But it's really simple. Basically, you're just going to get your skid plate out of the way, which is this Allen head here. Another one down here, get your skid plate out. You need to remove this plastic cover. There's an Allen head up there, another one down there. Once you get your plastic cover off, you'll have access to the drain bolt, which is down here, as well as the fill bolt, which is up here. Drain the old fluid out, replace your drain plug, pour the new fluid in the top, very simple. What I do want to talk about, though, is the new updated information from the owner's manual. So this year, the owner's manual for the new Sting R recommends that you change the fluid far less frequently, and it also recommends that you use a lot less oil. I believe the original MX3 Sting manual called for 150 milliliters of oil and now they're only saying you need to refill with 70 to 90. When I went and did my first oil change, I went ahead and used the gear oil that they sent with the bike. Super easy, pretty convenient with this little tip, don't make a mess. But instead, the next time I do an oil change, I'm not going to be putting this China juice in there. I'm going to opt for some higher quality uh, like performance gear oil. I found this Lucas oil, which I'll pop up on the screen now. Um, it's a really well known quality company Lucas in the motocross industry and the manual calls for 85 90 weight oil and which the Lucas is 80 90 and it's it's not gonna matter but basically the the first number on the oil is the cold temperature viscosity and the second number is the the hot temperature viscosity so an 80 90 versus an 85 90 is just gonna be slightly more viscous at cold temperatures and it's gonna be exactly the same once it heats up so it's not gonna be a big deal um, I believe the Lucas oil bottle is only a 11 bucks and it's enough oil in there to do up to 10 oil changes so 11 bucks and you got enough oil probably probably for the life of the bike who knows and also from talking with Eric from Luna Cycle about these differentials, uh, he informed me that Talaria has never seen a differential fail. Uh, I know on some of the MX3s they had that problem with if, if the chain derailed or something it would snap off, but they've fixed that with the beefier bracket apparently this year. But he said that they were looking into doing testing about how long, how much longer they can go between intervals of oil changes, and they're also going to do a test. He said of running that gearbox as long as they can with no oil in it at all. So I think Talaria was playing it better safe than sorry with the mx3 and the recommendations in the manual and seeing how well that their gearbox performed over the last year they went ahead and slacked up a bit on their requirements for the oil as well as oil change intervals so if if the oil change interval was something that was kind of deterring you away from this bike you got to do it once after the first couple hundred miles and then after that the, the manual recommends 3,000 kilometers, which is just shy of 1,900 miles. So you can basically do an oil change every 2,000 miles after the first break-in one. So much better than what they had originally stated in the MX-3 manual. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is chain adjustment. Ensuring that you have the proper slack in your chain can greatly increase the life of both your chain and your sprockets. Um, these back sprockets especially tend to get pretty chewed up when you run excess slack. And I mentioned it in another video, typically on a motocross bike, you, you, you run about three fingers of slack behind the chain guard, but since this bike's rear drive and front drive is in line with the pivot point on the swing arm, it doesn't actually change the overall length from here to the front sprocket as the suspension travels up and down. So with these bikes, you really only, I mean, I even probably have too much slack here. You really only need about a quarter inch up and a quarter inch down is all you need. So I could even tighten this up a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to adjust your chain, you just want to go ahead and get your back wheel up off the ground. You can get your bike on a stand or anything you have available to you just to lift the rear end up. Next, you want to get a 17 millimeter socket and go ahead and loosen your rear axle nut. You don't have to take it all the way out. You just need to get it loose. Next, you're going to need two 10 millimeter wrenches. Yes, two. Usually they make this a different size than this, but for whatever reason they didn't on this bike. So you need two 10 millimeter wrenches, one for the lock nut and one for the adjustment bolt right here. First thing you're going to do is loosen the lock nut. Just go ahead and loosen that up. Give yourself some 
room up there. And the way that this adjustment bolt right here works is as you loosen it, it pushes into the axle block, pushing the rear wheel further back. So since I need to tighten my chain a little bit, I'm going to make a small adjustment loosening this, therefore pushing the rear axle block back. And I'm going to do this little by little, and I'm going to do it on each side slowly. And if you look down here on the bottom of the axle block, there's these little lines. And whatever you do on this side, you want to do the exact same on the other side. So your rear wheel stays straight. Do this little by little. Whatever adjustment you make to the right side, make the exact same adjustment to the left side. Make sure that your indicator here on the rear axle block is the same on this side as the other side. And then check your slack. All right, so now that I've made my adjustments to the chain adjusters, uh, as you can see there, I've got the right side just a little bit past that fifth line. And uh, same on this side. I've got just a little past the fifth line there. And the slack's looking good. It's, it's a little tighter now, still got a little wiggle room, about a quarter inch up and a quarter inch down. That's really all you need for this bike, so I'm going to go ahead and get this tightened back up. When you're tightening this back up, you don't want the rear wheel to move in the chain sliders. So an old trick that I learned is you can take a shop rag, just put it in the sprocket there, and wind it up into the wheel. And that's going to get your chain really tight and it's going to pull the rear wheel forward that way when you tighten your lock nuts and your uh, rear axle bolt there this isn't allowed to move at all and it ensures that your rear wheel stays straight and where you put it all right so once you got your rag stuffed in there uh, you're just going to tighten down the lock nut and when you do that you just want to hold a wrench on the adjuster bolt so it doesn't move and just go ahead and tighten down that lock nut not too tight, you do not want to strip these out and you do not want to be drilling these out of your swing arm. Do the same thing on the other side and then we're just going to tighten back up the 17 millimeter axle bolt and that's done. Alright, so to tighten your rear axle nut, you need to get the 17 millimeter socket on that side as well as a 6 millimeter Allen key in that side and then you can hold it and tighten it without it spinning. Once you get it all tight, you go ahead and take that off, remove your rag. So now that we've done that, let's check our slack again. Looks good. Let's check our centering. Looks good. Let's see if it spins. Spins smooth. Good to go. All right, so once you've got your chain adjusted, uh, it's always a good idea to go ahead and lube it. So the way I usually do this is just get it up on a stand, push the back wheel, and then spray the lube right there. A cheat code, you can get it up on a stand and just kind of spin the throttle and just spray the lube right there where you do it. I only have two hands, so I can't do it. But uh, yes, I use WD-40 on my chains for chain lube. Yes, it is not the best lube for a chain, but you know what? I hate chain wax and I hate chain lube because it slings all over the bike and it's hard to get off. So you can use whatever your little heart desires. I don't care, I use WD-40. Just keep your chain lubed, all right? Another thing that you should check on these bikes is your headset. I've been reading a lot of things about people's headsets getting loose, them riding the bike with them loose and it rattling back and ha back. Ooh. I've heard of people's headsets loosening up on them and them riding with them loose and it rattling back and forth and pretty much boring out their steer tube. And once that happens, it's kind of game over. So if you have any play in your stem or your, your steering, Go ahead and loosen these pinch bolts. There's one on this side and one on this side. Remove this rubber grommet right here. And then there's an Allen right here. And the more you tighten that Allen, the more your stem bearings are gonna squish together. So you, you wanna have it up in the air. You wanna have it on a stand and tighten it and make sure that your bars are still able to move. Make sure you're not over tightening it and causing damage to your bearings that way. But just make sure you got all the slack out of there, tighten this down and then tighten back up those two pinch bolts on your stem and you should be good to go. Next thing that you can easily check is your fluid level in your brake calipers. There's a little sight glass there. Just, you know, periodically keep an eye on that. Make sure you're not low on fluid. If you are, just go ahead and pop these two star bolts out on the top and add some mineral oil. Next thing we're going to talk about is the brake pads. Um, it's going to be hard to see in here, and I don't even know if this is going to focus or not. But periodically check your brake pads. Make sure you still have pad material before you get down to the metal. If you do get down to the metal, you will probably hear it, and you will probably definitely feel it as well. You don't want to run metal on metal. You risk damaging your rotors at that point, and also warping them if they get too hot. So periodically check your brake pads. Make sure they're still there. If you need new ones, go ahead and replace them. Same thing with your tires, you know basic tire wear if your tires are getting too low on tread it's going to become dangerous maybe think about replacing your tires 
Another thing to check periodically is your tire pressure. The manual calls for a max pressure of 35 PSI. I would recommend running anywhere in between 15 and 35, whatever you like, but just go ahead and check it because with temperature and pressure changes, they do tend to change from time to time, so keep an eye on them. Flat tires suck and they're easily avoidable. Another thing I'm going to talk about is battery maintenance. You do not want to store your battery at 100% or very low, like towards zero. Because what can happen is if you let things sit too long with too low of a charge, the battery voltage can droop below a level where it'll be able to be charged back. And then you've got to look into how to jumpstart your battery with you know alligators and all this other kind of stuff to get it back able to charge on the charger. So don't let your battery get too low. And also don't store it at 100%. These bikes ship with the batteries at 80%. If you know that you're not gonna ride the bike right then, don't charge it, just wait. Or if you do, you know, if it's at 80% from the day before, leave it. And if you're going to ride it the next day, charge it for an hour before you go. But don't let these batteries get too low and don't let them sit at 100%. You want to store them typically around 80%. That's how they ship and that's how they come from the factory. Probably a reason why. Another thing is the suspension. I don't really think that the rear shock is going to require too much maintenance. Same with the front. Um, I'm fairly impressed with this new factory fork they got, but just periodically check the fork legs here and see if you're getting any leaking from the seals. And if that's the case, you probably have dirt or something that's gotten up there and has either damaged or gotten stuck in the seal. There are tricks and things that you can do to get that out and remedy it if you do have a leak before you have to look into rebuilding your forks or sending them off for somebody to do it. Um, an old trick that me and my dad used to do in racing motocross to buy us some time is if you can take an old like film negative like just a thin piece of film and you can shove it up in there and kind of move it around and sometimes if you're lucky it's able to dislodge whatever's in there stuck or whatever's going on with your seal that's causing oil to come out but yeah just every once in a while look at your fork legs make sure your oil is not leaking out of your seals and you're good and the last thing I'm going to say as far as maintenance is, you know, just periodically give it a once over, check it down. You know, it's your, it's your life out there. You're the one riding the bike. You know, you want to make sure that you're safe. Luckily, a lot of these bolts from the factory come with a blue Sharpie line on them. So you can kind of go around and check just by eye on those blue Sharpie lines. As long as you haven't torn into the bike yet, as soon as you loosen those, you know, from the factory, it's not going to be the same. But if you haven't taken apart your bike yet, you can kind of use those as a visual guide to see if any of your nuts or bolts or hardware have backed out from where they started and you know just anything important you know your front axle check that out once in a while tighten up those pinch bolts check your you know check your front axle bolt your rear axle you know just your pegs make sure the pins are still in there just anything your chain inspect your chain look at your master link how's your chain looking how are your sprockets any part that could disrupt your ride and make it not so enjoyable for you just you know check those over make sure they're make sure they're still good that's pretty much it for this one guys that's all i can think of off the top of my head if you've got any maintenance tips or tricks that you know that i left out go ahead and drop them in the comments i'd love to know as always guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video if it provided you any value go ahead and drop the video a like greatly appreciate it and also if you're not yet go ahead and subscribe more videos coming we're not stopping and i appreciate each and every one of you guys hope you're doing well this wednesday peace